Where do you live? Where do you work? Where do you eat? Wherever you are, Grubhub has turned up the delivery heat. They don't own an oven and don't have a cookbook. But will this stock deliver innovation you can taste? I keep telling you about the rise of the stay-at-home economy where more and more consumers are glued to their couches, living off food that get delivered while watching Netflix or playing video games or fiddling with Facebook. We just don't seem to be going out as much as we used to. And why would we with so much incredible content right at our fingertips? Now, we've talked about many of the companies who make the stay-at-home revolution possible. Tonight, I wanted to highlight another name that's integral to this whole thesis, Grubhub, G-R-U-B for you home gamers. This company owns the largest online and mobile food ordering platform in the country, and it also owns Seamless, the online delivery site that no New Yorker can live without. Grubhub makes it possible to order from more than 50,000 restaurants in over 1,100 cities without ever needing to speak to another human, which is, of course, something the millennials hate to do. Now, Grubhub IPO'd roughly three years ago, 26 bucks. After surging up to the mid-40s in its first year of a public company, quickly sold off down to 18 in February of last year. Since then, though, this stock has made a stunning comeback, rallying to $42 in changes today. That's up nearly 14% year-to-date. The company reported a fabulous quarter last month, 26% rise in active, active diners, translating to a 39% increase in revenue. The value proposition for clients is very simple. Restaurants that have been on Grubhub's platform for more than two years generated more than 10% gross food sales growth in the most recent quarter. There it is. So can this company continue to thrive or do we need to be worried about competition? Let's drill down with Matt Maloney, the CEO of Grubhub, to get a better sense of how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Maloney, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Matt. Great to see you again. Well, it's been a fabulous run, Matt. I mean, I just got to list some of these. TGIF, uh, Baggiano's, uh, Rubio's uh, Coastal uh, Grill, also uh, Trial Subway, yep. Red Robin Gourmet, 100 Buffalo Wild Wings, 125 Denny's. It's really coming together, isn't yep. it? Absolutely. Just like uh, we've been talking about for two years, you know, it's about really bringing the restaurants people want to order from into, the, into the, their neighborhoods. And that's, that's really, you know, over the past two years, it's, it's, been a, it's been an incredible journey, and a lot of it's been around delivery. So not just networking the restaurants that mm -hmm. deliver for themselves, but executing that last mile fulfillment for them to make sure that BW3s is available everywhere. Right. Now, what clearly it's happened, this is an accelerated revenue growth quarter, which we did not have very many of. And I think a lot of it is because delivery as a percentage of overall orders has increased and you're getting a much bigger percentage than the other guys. Yeah, we absolutely are. I mean, it's about making sure that we can get the right restaurants mm -hmm. to the right houses. But the growth that we've seen, it was, it was actually dramatic in our tier two, our second tier markets, tier three. We saw 2x growth than we did in the tier one, the big, uh, the big metro areas where we've been, you know, very powerful for a, for a long and time. And we said 1,100, but there's obviously there's far more that oh, you yeah. can still be in, so the world is right. still uh, yours. Absolutely, right yeah. We see the accelerated growth, and that's really because you know our product keeps getting better, right. both the door, the diner ordering channels, but also the delivery. And the delivery helps us expand our geographical coverage, so we have more restaurants in more markets, so that when we do the, uh, the kind of national flyover right. advertising, it's more effective. We've seen a higher ROI all across the country. Now, it's also very clear that the first mover advantage mattered much more than people thought, that the competition, that, you know, whether it be Uber or whether it be some of these other companies right. that, you know, Postmates, they're all doing okay, but it turns out to be if you just did this, if you did food and you were first mover, it's much more sticky than we thought. It's very sticky. Uh, you know, there's, there's not a lot of reasons why, uh, you know, once, once you start ordering online, you recognize it's so much easier, so much better than calling the restaurant. And so whoever's there, it, I absolutely agree with you. They have a significant advantage. But what, what we do, like, we do it better than anyone else. All of them I mean, I would there. normally not let you go, but it's true. I mean, because I, I mean, everything I've read, it's just true. You do it better than everybody. We have, we have greater scale than anyone else. Right. We have the, uh, the, the economics, the scale economics, so we can have a lower cost for restaurants and for diners. We, we have a lower transactional fee for diners across the board and than it's anyone very clear, you, you You actually, in, in this quarter, stress that there is a, if there's a price differential, then people will go to the place that has the cheaper. Absolutely. Right. We have the same restaurants. The diner fee is less. Would you rather pay ten dollars to get delivery or three ninety nine? Exactly. I mean, think about it. Now, now another thing here that I thought was very interesting is, is that although this quarter was twenty nine percent, you would actually be an amazing Trump trade. You have a normalized forty percent tax rate. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so yeah. if you do get tax relief, Grubhub is going to make a lot more I, money. Yeah, I can't. I can't predict what's going to happen. Right. There's a, you know new headlines every day, but I can tell you that if we see tax relief, it's going to absolutely help us 
90% of our business is in the U.S. All right, now let's talk big for a second. Yeah. Uh, in your release, you, in, in your conference call, you mentioned at one point big data. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here as someone who owns a tavern, and I am thinking, you are the repository of incredible knowledge to people like hot food, to people like food that's uh, vegetarian, to like vegan. How can you mine that for your customers? It's exactly what we're doing right now. Insights for restaurateurs just like you. Like, you're the perfect case okay. because you have a menu. You know it works. Now, now first of all, I, I want to talk about your stay-at-home economy thesis. Yes, okay. Here's the thing. I know you like it. I, I know. I, it's interesting, but I disagree that it's going to stifle restaurants. I totally disagree. I think okay. this is a Tell massive me. opportunity for restaurants. What we see is that after a year, restaurants that are on Grubhub see 30% more sales. One in five double their takeout revenue. I see the delivery. But they can't make the money on the booze. You can deliver booze. It depends on well, your local municipality. Yes, it it's does. not on me. I will deliver booze for you if, if New York City lets you deliver right. booze. That's not but on that's me. That's a great point. You can deliver booze. I'm telling you, I order far more frequently from my favorite restaurants than I would if I went out. I don't have to deal with sitters. I don't have to deal with parking. It's just the hassle. I can order once a week my favorite sushi spot. It's there. It's exactly what I want, and I love it. I order more from restaurants because of delivery. So you think that all these chains are coming in because obviously this is a great growth item. It's not just defense. They're not it's playing defense. It's actually offense. Yeah, no, you, your, your research is right. People are ordering way more from staying right. at home. They're not going into restaurants right. as much, but that doesn't mean that we're limiting revenue because of that. It means it's a bigger opportunity for restaurants. I, I like to say delivery is not a side dish anymore. It's a main entree. Restaurants can make a ton of money just if they focus on this. At Bar San Miguel, you should have a delivery specific menu. Delivery specific menu. Take the things that deliver best, put it in a sub menu, and then put it online. Let us help you do the delivery. We can expand your boundaries. We can, you can make far more money than you I would. I wish I could make a call. <laughs> I, know, I know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> you know, you have game. You got game, man. This Matt Maloney, the CEO of Grubhub, there's a lot to like here. And all that stuff about the competition, well, you know what? It's kind of not panning out. G-R-U-B. Stick with Grub. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.